subscribe, and hit the bell icon. The Scalloped Hammerhead Shark. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. <coughs> oh, this? I found this seashell at the beach. I've got a whole box full of seashells. If you put the seashell close to your ear, you can hear the sea. Here, listen. <coughs> it sounds just like the sea, doesn't it? <coughs> What's the matter, Hero? Hmm? I think there's something underneath the seashells. It's a fish. Look at the shape of its head. It's so weird. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find any information about the fish? Hi, Leo. I sure did. The fish you found is actually a young scalloped hammerhead shark. The shark gets its name from the unusual shape of its head, which looks like a hammer. The shark's head helps it to find prey. There are special sense organs spread out over the wide head of the scalloped hammerhead shark. These organs help the shark to pick up electrical signals that are given off by animals underwater. Wow! Just like a radar! So, what animals does the scalloped hammerhead shark eat? Scalloped hammerhead sharks mostly eat fish like sardines and herring, and sometimes animals like squid and octopus. Bigger hammerhead sharks even eat smaller sharks. But since the shark you found is still young, it prefers to eat small fish and shrimp. By the way, scalloped hammerhead sharks live in the warm tropical waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. Hmm. The pond in our garden isn't big enough for the shark to swim in. We should bring the shark back to its home in the ocean. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. What is it, Hero? Hey, where did the shark go? Let me have a look. I see the hammerhead shark. It's chasing shrimp underwater. Oh no, the shark is caught in the net. The net must have come from that boat over there. I think it's a shrimp trawler. What's a shrimp trawler? A shrimp trawler is a fishing boat designed to catch shrimp. Unfortunately, other marine animals are sometimes caught in the nets by accident. These marine animals are called bycatch. We've got to save our friend from becoming bycatch. Katie and Hero, you stay here and watch the jeep, okay? What do you think, Hero? Should Leo have all the fun alone? <laughs> Phew, that was close. Thanks, Katie and Hero. I could not have done it without you two. No problem, Leo. It was actually Hero's idea. We did it! We found the young hammerhead shark's home. Great work, everyone! Yay! Hooray! a young 
young scalloped hammerhead shark in our garden. We learned that scalloped hammerhead sharks come from the tropical waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. So we went to the ocean and brought the young shark back to its home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The reef manta ray. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Look at my kite. It's flying like a big bird in the sky. Oops, the wind got my kite. Wait for me, Hero. You found my kite, Hero. Hey, it's a water tank. Look at that. There's an animal swimming in the tank. What a weird looking animal. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? You're just in time, Leo. The animal you found is a manta ray. There are only two types of manta rays, and this one is a reef manta ray. The reef manta ray is the smallest of the two, but an adult reef manta ray can still reach a width of up to five meters. Whoa, that's really big! But the reef manta ray we found is much smaller than that. It's probably a baby reef manta ray, Leo. Newly born reef manta rays are just over a meter wide. Reef manta rays are found along the coasts in the warm tropical waters of the Indian and Pacific Oceans. I see. So what do reef manta rays eat? Reef manta rays are filter feeders. They simply open their mouths while swimming and feed on small animals from the water, such as shrimp and krill. Reef manta rays are independent creatures. After birth, a baby reef manta ray, which is called a pup, receives no further care from its parents. That means the baby manta ray doesn't need to go back to its mother. But the tank in our garden is too small for it to live in. We should bring the reef manta ray back to the ocean. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. some creatures floating on the sea. They are sea jellies. Sea jellies are marine animals that swim in the ocean. Turtles and large fish hunt it for food. There are so many of them. Hey, what's that up ahead? It's Ranger Rocky. He's surrounded by a lot of sea jellies. That must be a sea jelly bloom. A sea jelly bloom is when a huge number of sea jellies appear suddenly. Ranger Rocky, are you okay? Hello, Leo. I am stuck in a sea jelly bloom. If I drive my jet ski, I might harm the sea jellies. So I have nowhere to go. Don't worry, Ranger Rocky. We'll help you. I have a plan. First, let's get a bit closer. Okay, Katie and Hero, I need to borrow both your backpacks. You want to use our propellers? Good plan, brother. Okay, here I go. Hello, Junior Ranger. Here, Ranger Rocky. You can use these to fly to our Jeep. Thank you, Leo. Hi, Ranger Rocky. Thank you, Junior Rangers. I'm glad I got out of that jello-like situation. You're welcome, Ranger Rocky. We did it! We found a safe home for the reef manta ray. Hooray! Yay! 
A reef manta ray pup in our garden. We learned that the reef manta ray lives along the coasts of the Indian and Pacific Oceans and that they like to live alone around coral reefs. So we went to a coral reef and found the manta ray a new home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The mola. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Look, Hero. It's a beautiful day. Let's soak up the sun. Ah, isn't this nice, Hero? Ranger Rocky. Hello, junior ranger. What do you have at the back of your truck, Ranger Rocky? It's a fish known as the mola. I'm bringing it back to the ocean. Oh, excuse me. Ranger Rocky speaking. Oh my, I'll come over right away. I have to rescue an elephant that has its foot caught in a trap. Can you junior rangers help me return the mola to its natural home? Yes, I can, but where does the mola live? Thank you, Leo. I'll call you again. Ranger Rocky, wait! Where do molas live? You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Smile, Mola! Hi, Katie. What have you found out about the mola? Hi, Leo. The mola is also known as the ocean sunfish, and its scientific name is Mola Mola. The word mola is a Latin word for millstone. A millstone is a circular stone that is used to grind grains. The mola sure looks like a millstone. Is it as heavy as one? An adult mola can weigh over 2,000 kilograms and can grow up to 4 meters tall. However, it has a very small mouth for a fish its size. Molas eat some small fish and squid. But its favorite food is jellyfish. Jellyfish normally sting, but molas are one of the few animals that can eat jellyfish without getting hurt. Wow, that's amazing. But Ranger Rocky wants us to bring it back to its natural home. So where is that? Well, the mola is also called the ocean sunfish because it lives in temperate and tropical waters of every ocean in the world. Hmm, we have to bring this mola back to its home in the tropical waters. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. For lots of fun and lots to learn One, two, off we go For lots of fun and lots to learn This looks like a nice spot to let the mola out There you go, mola Swim away and find your friends Look, the mola is enjoying the sun Oh no, those seagulls are pecking at the mola Let's chase them away. Shoot, Shoot seagulls, seagulls, go away! Go away! Now there are more seagulls. Let's throw out some breadcrumbs. Maybe that will distract the seagulls. Yes, let's try that. It doesn't work. Katie and Hero, Let's take out our propellers and chase these seagulls away. Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Do not stop the seagulls, Junior Rangers. They are helping the mola. Besides small fish, molas often seek help from seagulls. 
to remove parasites from their bodies. Then let's not disturb the seagulls anymore. Goodbye, Mola Mola. We did it! We found jellyfish for the Mola to eat. Great work, everyone. Ranger Rocky left a mola in our garden. We learned that small fish and seagulls help to get rid of parasites that live on molas. And that jellyfish are the mola's favorite food. So we brought the mola back to the ocean where it can eat a lot of jellyfish. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The electric eel. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Look at this, Hero. It's a boat I made out of leaves. Now, time to test it out. Hmm, it looks kind of lonely. I know. I'll make a boat for you too, Hero. There, now we can have a boat race. We'll start blowing our boats on the count of three. Ready, Hero? One, two, three! <laughs> ah! Could it be some kind of snake? We must have disturbed it with our boat race. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is an electric eel. An electric eel? Can it make electricity? It sure can. An electric eel is a kind of fish that uses electricity to stun its prey and defend itself from predators. The electric eel can produce electricity because it has special organs that allow it to store power, just like batteries. That's a really neat skill. What else does the electric eel use its electricity for? The electric eel has poor eyesight so it uses electricity to sense its surroundings and find prey. The electric eel does this by releasing a low-level electric charge, which it uses like a radar. I see. What kind of food do electric eels eat? Electric eels eat sea creatures like fish, crabs, and shrimps. Some also eat small animals like frogs and birds. Electric eels live in South America where they can be found in the Amazon and Orinoco rivers. Hmm, it's too dangerous for the fish in our pond to live with the electric eel. We should bring the electric eel back to its natural home. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. There. Whoa! Whoa! Ah, it's a river monster. That's not a river monster, Leo. That's an anaconda. Anacondas are the largest snakes in the world. They also have large appetites and prey on anything they can eat. It's wrapping itself around the float. The anaconda must think the jeep is food. No, Hero. The anaconda can swallow you whole. We could get the electric eel to help us. It can zap the anaconda and scare it away. Be careful, Katie. I have these rubber gloves to protect me from the eel's electricity. I have to make sure I don't touch the water with my skin. <clears throat> the electric eel is too heavy. Let me help you, Katie. There it goes! 
The electric eel zapped the anaconda. Look, it's letting go of the float. Now, let's put the eel back in the tank and get out of here. We did it! We found the electric eel's home! Great job, everyone! Hooray! Yay! an electric eel in our garden. We learned that electric eels produce electricity to stun prey and scare away predators. We also learned that electric eels live in the Amazon and Orinoco rivers. So we went to the Orinoco River and brought the electric eel back home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The leafy sea dragon. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Look what I got, Hero. It's a marine aquarium, and it has special saltwater plants in it. Look at that pretty seaweed, Hero. It looks like it has eyes. <gasps> it moved. Did you see that, too? What do you think? Is this seaweed or an animal? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So what is it? You won't believe it, Leo. It's an animal. The name of this animal is the leafy sea dragon. It's a type of fish. Leafy sea dragons are similar to the more famous seahorses. It looks more like seaweed than a seahorse. I wonder if it eats seaweed. No, it doesn't. The leafy sea dragon is a carnivore, which means it feeds on other animals like tiny shellfish and shrimp. It has a mouth that looks like a straw, which it uses to suck up its food. So there's no food for the leafy sea dragon in the aquarium. The aquarium isn't a good home for the leafy sea dragon anyway. It needs to live in the sea, where there's plenty of food for it. And the best place for leafy sea dragons is in the waters of southern Australia. That's the only place in the world where they can be found and also where they can be safe. There are laws in Australia to protect leafy sea dragons. People are not allowed to remove these rare animals from the sea without permission. Then let's take the leafy sea dragon back home so it can stay where it's protected. Come and join us. Yes, let's go. See you downstairs. Come on, everybody. Join me in this party. One, two, here we go for lots of fun. Rocky, you got here fast. What's going on? I want to make sure nobody comes too close. A storm just hit this area, and it washed a heap of seaweed ashore. Leafy sea dragons live among seaweed, so they often get washed ashore with the seaweed when the waters get rough. Oh, no! So there might be leafy sea dragons lying in the seaweed? I'm afraid so, Katie. I'm looking through the seaweed to find them. I want to put them back in the water quickly so that they'll survive. We'll help you, Ranger Rocky. That would be great. Come in. Look, I just found a leafy sea dragon in this pile of seaweed. If you find any leafy sea dragons, put them in here. Yes, yes Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Good 
job, Junior Rangers. We found all the leafy sea dragons. Since we're taking our leafy sea dragon back to its natural home, we can also bring these, Ranger Rocky. That's wonderful, Leo. Please, take this. Look at how much seagrass there is. This will be a great home for the leafy sea dragons. There they go. Stay safe, leafy sea dragons. We did it. We found the leafy sea dragons a home. Great job, everybody. Hooray! Yay! We found a leafy sea dragon in my marine aquarium. We learned that leafy sea dragons are very rare animals that look like seaweed. They hide in seaweed so that other animals can't spot them. And we took the leafy sea dragon home to Australia because leafy sea dragons are protected there. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The white spotted bamboo shark. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. It's such a warm day, so I'm gonna let my pet turtle cool off in the pond. <laughs> Did I give you an idea, Hero? Wow, look at that big fish. It's trying to grab the turtle. There you go. I didn't know we had such a big fish in our pond. Let me scoop it out with the tank. Hey, this big fish looks like a small shark. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi Katie, did you find anything about the baby shark? Hi Leo. The animal you found is a white-spotted bamboo shark. But it's not a baby. It's a young adult. But I thought sharks were big and scary animals. Not all sharks are big and dangerous, Leo. Adult bamboo sharks will not grow longer than one meter in length. So this bamboo shark is almost fully grown. And bamboo sharks are harmless to humans. So where does the bamboo shark come from? White spotted bamboo sharks are found in coral reefs in the Pacific Ocean around Southeast Asia. What's a coral reef? A coral reef is made up of tiny animals called polyps. Polyps stay in one place and form the shapes of the coral reef. A coral reef can be very colorful and is filled with many living creatures, such as plants and fish. Wow! Coral reefs are beautiful! Bamboo sharks live in coral reefs because most of the small animals they eat are found there. The bamboo shark uses his small teeth to hold onto its prey and crush them. The coral reef also provides protection for the bamboo shark because there are a lot of places to hide from predators. Hmm. Our pond doesn't have a coral reef, so we should bring the bamboo shark back to where it belongs. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. With our Jeep, we should get there in no time. A big shark is following us, Leo. Don't worry, Katie. I'll go a little faster. It's one of the great white sharks, the great hunters of the sea. They can swim very fast, and they sometimes eat smaller sharks. As long as we're in the Jeep, we're safe. It's another great white shark. 
Leo, the bamboo shack has fallen into the sea. Come back, hero. It's too dangerous. The sharks are coming this way. Where's Hero? I can't see him. Look! Hero found a reef. He's standing on it. That's great! The great white sharks won't be able to swim there. Full speed ahead! The bamboo shark is almost on the other side. Escape the big sharks! Enjoy, Bamboo Shark! We did it! We found a new home for the Bamboo Shark! Hooray! Yay! found a white spotted bamboo shark in our pond. We learned that bamboo sharks are small and harmless to humans and that they live in the coral reefs of the Pacific Ocean. So we brought the bamboo shark to a safe spot in a colorful coral reef. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Hola, exploradores juniors. Check out our Spanish channel by clicking the link in the description below. See you there!